Hey, this is Wes. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about Substance Modeler. So I used Modeler to create the camera that you see here. Now, Modeler is SDF based, so it's using voxels, and that's a bit different than using polygons, points, and edges. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a walkthrough of the process and the steps that I went through to create this camera. So let's jump in and take a look. I'm going to begin by blocking in the base of my camera body. So I start with clay and some primitive shapes. And here you can see I'm using a cube. I'm rounding, adding a little bit of fillet. And now we get this kind of rounded cube base. And I set my resolution and then I go into my smoothing with mirror symmetry. And now I'm just going to smooth all the edges. I don't want this to look as blocky as it does. So using smooth, I can just smooth out these edges, get a little bit more of a rounded look. So now I'm gonna jump into my inflate tool and I'm using the gizmo. I'm gonna position the gizmo and now I'm just gonna inflate this corner. So this just gives me a little bit of variation here to the overall grip of the camera. So once that's done, every time I've done some type of deformation, I'm gonna run in and run and well, use a smooth to smooth out any artifacting and just get some really nice transitions to my core shapes. So now that that's done, I'm gonna use another deformation tool called warp. And now you can see that I'm using my gizmo again. I'm just reorienting everything here in my scene. And what I want to do is just add a little bit of a curvature here to this overall camera body. So I'm increasing the gizmo, holding down spacebar, and then pushing that out on the X axis. Again, as you'll see me do over and over, every time I do some type of deformation, I run in and, and use a smooth. Now here I'm using the warp tool once again. And on this core body, I'm going to pull out some additional shape. Now, you'll notice here that what I'm going to do is I, I want this to have a bit of a, a bevel or a slope transition. So I used hardness on that warp and pulled it out. And you can see that how this gives me a plane change from the core shape to where the housing area for the lens is going to be. And like I said, again, I'm running into smooth, smoothing out any of those artifacts. But using that hardness mode gave me that really nice shape transition there. So now I'm using the eraser tool and I'm gonna punch a hole here. I'm starting to build out the overall housing for where I want the lens. So you can see here that uh, I'm now using my cylinder and I'm gonna use thickness. Thickness is going to basically, you know, create a hollow piece of geometry. It's just gonna give me a thick edge. This is gonna be great. So I'm gonna position this around the edge and then I'm going to use what's called our split tool. Split tool is a function of the eraser tool. And this is awesome because it allows me to not only cut a hole, but as you can see here, it pushes out that geometry into its own layer. This is great for creating rings and panels and things like that on different types of surfaces. And then once that's done, I usually run a smooth, just to kind of smooth everything out. So now I have that nice kind of ring just using split. So next, I'm going to continue working on the lens. I start, as always, with, you know, a basic primitive shape. We're going to kind of block in this shape. Sometimes I go into eraser mode because I like this overlay. Just allows me to kind of see or gauge the size of my clay tool uh, as it relates to the shapes that I'm, I'm going to be uh, compositing it with in the background. And so here I have my uh, shape. You can see that I'm using taper. I'm just kind of tapering this in. There's a lot of parameter controls that you have on each one of these uh, clay primitives. So be sure to check those out. So here you can see that, you know, I did a little bit of taper, used a bit of fillet. Uh, so that I could get a nice little bevel edge. Anytime you can add beveling on the edges, that's great because it really helps catch the light, really helps to sell that render and make products look a bit more realistic. So I, again, had a little bit of trouble there, but uh, you can see that I've now uh, finally getting into creating that shape. That's that fillet I was just talking about. So I hit space bar was able to create that geometry and then just pulled out another version of that. Now I'm doing it all in its own layer because what I want to do is I want to fuse all of these elements into one piece. And that's one of the things that's great about Modeler is you can take pieces uh, and the clay is in the same layer. You hit space bar and just fuses everything together. So now that piece of geometry is one shape. So here again, I'm going to use my erase tool. Let's cut a hole. So this is the housing for where the lens is going to be. And so there you can see that I have that one piece and I've cut a hole into it, switched over to my clay tool. Modeler will always remember the shape that you're working on when you swap between eraser and clay. That's super handy, especially when you're cutting and creating geometry based on that same shape. So here I'm creating the actual lens itself. And this is the, the two parts of the lens because this is what's actually going to control, you know, the zooming mechanism. So again, just grouping my uh, parts together, positioning, moving them into space just to keep everything, um, you know, positioned the way I want. 
And so now I'm going to start creating a, a hole in this area, which is going to allow me to uh, create where the actual glass lens is going to be. So again, use the eraser to punch a hole into here. I'm adding just a, you know, a little piece of clay. And now what you'll see me do here is just cut a hole. And then I'm going to create yet another piece of geometry. I, I jump this one out onto its own layer, add a lot of fillet, reduce that uh, thickness. Uh, now, what the reason I'm doing this here is because I want to have this fillet to create this nice kind of curvature that's really perfect for this lens piece, especially when we add a material that has any refraction to it. So now I'm just going to go in and just set my resolution for each one of these pieces. Just make sure things line up the way that I need them to. And slight little tweak here and there, and I'm ready to go. So at this point here, I've pretty much finished out the lens. Now you can see that I'm going to be adding an extra little detail here. So again, using the clay tool, I'm grabbing the cylinder primitive and just kind of positioning this guy. Now you'll see me here jump into my eraser and then I'm using the split functionality and just split that little detail piece off. Again, like I told you, split is great for making little panels and rings and things like that. Uh, now I just went through and just readjusted my resolution. You can always change the resolution of the clay that you put down. So now we're starting with a uh, new layer here, and it looks like what I'm going to do is uh, take a clay primitive and I'm going to just set roundness and position this piece here. Now what I'll end up doing is running into uh, using my split tool, but you can see that right now in clay mode, I'm just setting up, uh, getting everything in place, and there you can see I've ran that split operation. Now, usually, like I said, after I've done a split, I will then, you know, run into here with my smooth and just run a smooth around the border. That really helps to continue to bevel and smooth out those edges. Very vital for, you know, having light interact with those edges. They really catch that light and helps things look a lot more realistic, as I had mentioned earlier. So now I'm adding another piece here. And again, just starting with my clay primitive. This is going to be uh, created or this piece here. You can see that I haven't actually created the clay. I'm just using the tool to position the shape. Once this is in place, you'll see I hit the space bar. And because I'm doing this in the same layer as the body, it's going to fuse this new capsule piece with the body. This is an awesome part of modeler. This is difficult to do with just a, a traditional polygon modeler because you're working with edges and maybe booleans and things like that. But here in modeler, I can just easily fuse uh, my parts together and get some very complex shape changes going from, you know, one shape to another and having them fuse together. Uh, here you can see I just used the split tool just to add a little bit of extra detail here. Again, that paneling I was talking about earlier. So once we have this in place, I just set my resolution, make sure everything's looking pretty good. And that is going to work for me. So now what I'm going to do is just probably start to add in another detail. I think what I'm going to do here is start working on the flash itself. So you can see I start again, same song and dance. I start with a primitive. I position this guy into space. I'm using the gizmo, holding down control and clicking on one of these points lets me scale my tool in a non-uniform way, which is really great. So here I'm going to use fillet, just again, working on those edges, always thinking about that. Now here you can see a great example. I just fused this hard surface piece into that transitional curve shape of the camera body. Very difficult to do in a tra traditional modeling tool. I was able to do that very quickly here in Modeler. Now what I'm going to do is use my erase tool. I'm going to just punch a little hole here in the front. And I think what I do is I actually run into split. So I just split that out. This is a great way to work. So I have split. It gave me a new piece of geometry on its own layer. And now I can just push that out into space. Again, give me another little um, beveled edge there. So now what I'm going to do is work on the actual housing for the flash itself. So I'm just going to, again, start with a, a typical shape, just like I'm doing. Using uh, the erase mode here is, is pretty helpful in Modeler because, like I said, that overlay lets me see the shapes behind it. And so that just helped me line everything up. So now that I have this in place, I'm just going to run a fillet so I get a nice little curved edge, position, scale, and then I'm going to hit my space bar here to create this clay. Again, this little flash housing is going to be on its own layer, and I can easily throw material on that once we get into stager. All right, so now that the overall camera body is done, I'm going to start working on a few buttons. I'm going to add a button here that's going to go on the front of the lens. So here it looks like I created a new layer, and then I'm going to just round this shape, reposition this guy here, and uh, actually, no, I'm not in a new layer. I'm in the layer for my camera body. And again, the reason behind this is I want to fuse this shape with that camera body. So you can see that I'm in that layer and I'm positioning the shape just as I shown earlier. I hit spacebar and it fuses everything together. So that becomes one kind of machined component. And now I'm using the eraser tool to just cut a hole into that. I jump from eraser to clay. And now I'm on a new layer and set my resolution. And then this is going to be the actual button and that's created on its own layer there. 
Okay, so now that that's in place, we're gonna work on yet another button here that's gonna be on the front of the camera. So again, I'm going to start here with a base shape. This time I'm inside the layer uh, of the camera body again. Uh, here you're gonna see me use the split tool though. So I jump into erase, position the shape the way that I want, and then I'm going to use here my split tool to just pop out that button into its own layer. And then I just push it down the surface and then just run a smooth around the edge here. So now I'm just taking a look at the overall shape. We need to create that eyepiece here for the back of the camera. So this is going to be a fused piece as well. So you can see, you know, same thing I've been showcasing uh, throughout this demo. We're just going to add a shape. We're going to create a fillet. Then we merge it down just by hitting a space bar. And then I just run a smooth around the edge to get a really nice kind of soft transition for that piece. Now, once I have that done, I jump over to my erase tool and we're going to cut a hole here for this little eyepiece. And then I'm just going to create uh, just another piece of clay on a new layer. You always create things on a new layer because if you don't and they're all in the same layer, the geometry is always going to fuse. Uh, it's always going to fuse together. So that's why you want to create certain parts on their own layers. OK, so we have all this set. Now, the thing that I'm going to do next is uh, you see that I took a cube and I made it super thin. I'm going to place this right into the middle of the body and then I'm going to run split on this. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to basically split the camera body into two halves. We have a front and a back, and I want this to look like a nice kind of machined piece where the front and back are now assembled together. And you can see that I was able to do that very easily with split. Now, here you can see I'm back to working on that button. Here I duplicate the button, hitting Control-D, I scale it down, and I mark this as a Boolean operation and then apply it to the previous button I had. That cuts a hole. Now I can take my cutting object, my Boolean object, turn that off as a Boolean object, and now you can see that we were able to quickly create that little ring. And then here I'm just going to rotate the button and just push it down inside uh, of the actual button housing. And there we go for that button. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on creating some holes for the camera body where we're able to put the screws. So as I was mentioning earlier, when I use that split function to, you know, cut the camera body into a front and a back. Now uh, we have this nice uh, transitional uh, element here for that, where we were able to split out that piece. But now I want to create some holes for where their screws are going to be. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a new layer. I'm creating several of these little cylinder pieces and then just duplicating them. So you'll see I hit the clay, uh, you know, hit space bar to, to create the clay, and then I move the shape. Now I'm marking them as a Boolean object, and then I'm just subtracting this from the camera base. So now we have these little holes where I can now put the screws or the hardware that's going to hold the front and back together. So once again, I jump out on a new layer, starting with my cylinder. Really cool that Modeler remembered my shape so I don't have to, you know, gauge what the size is. It's already fitting that hole that I just cut. And now I'm just adding a fillet shape here. You can see that I'm going to use my capsule tool here with the erase so that I can, you know, create the front part of the screw. So I'm just kind of lining this guy up. And you can see I just do a slight rotation. And then I'm just going to do a subtraction here, just hitting space bar, quick rotation, subtraction. And there we go. I have the front of a screw. And then just positioning that into place. Now what you're going to see me do is simply hit control D with the gizmo tool active. And that is a quick way to just, you know, make duplicates of objects. You can even link these objects together. I'm not really doing it here in this case, but what I'm doing here is just simply just control D duplicating them and then positioning them right into the hole. I hit F on the keyboard to zoom in really quick. Uh, a nice little handy keyboard shortcut there. And I'm not being like super methodical about, you know, like lining up the screw. It, it's doing enough of the job. And that's going to take care of the actual object itself. It took me about 20 minutes to do this without talking through it. So pretty quick and we get a, a nice result. Now here I'm going to file export. And for the export, I'm going to use FBX as the format and I choose my up axis is Y. Now for the topology, you have a couple options, uh, triangles, quads, and the raw mesh. Here I'm gonna use quads and I'm gonna set a target polygon count. So here you can see I'm, I'm pretty high at 200,000. So one thing to note, if I do have generate UVs enabled with the quads polygon type, this is going to create for me quad aligned triangles. All right, so I am going to just keep things set as they are here, uh, generate UVs. I could even generate UV tiles if I want, which is pretty nice, but in this case, we'll just do like a single material. Uh, I'm gonna flatten the hierarchy and then keep positive transforms only enabled. And now I can just hit export to generate my mesh. 
So here you can see the topology from my export and I have these quad aligned triangles because of that UV export. Over here on the left, I can see that UV layout from that auto unwrap process. So my next step will be texturing and rendering and that's a video for another day. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.